Hello, precious will circle it God. in vain. Trust you are it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning to till late at night, toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough. Now God can provide. I want you to see this. It says God can provide for His devoted lovers, even while this Now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy any time we come to God's presence. It tells us let's take a short reading from Job chapter 13, verses with God. And then we can do this through the prayer, through the word of God, and, and then we are about listening to that. So, I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then, please hit on the last button if you have not done so. This helps me to recommend this video out there to where you want, to where everyone can have access to it. Also, by doing this, you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel. Then, don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section. Hit on that subscribe button. Keep sharing this video. So, and and you and you here, and then get on to the notification YouTube bell. And do us the favor of tapping on the word. You are blessed. Are blessed. Be blessed. Thank you. God is in a hurry to make sure something breaks open about your destiny. Hallelujah. The only thing the devil can do tonight is witness your miracle. He will carry the package by himself and give you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, I'll share with us a few things to fire up our faith. Hallelujah. As we prepare to see the mighty things that God is doing, let's see how this episode will be tonight. Hallelujah. I need you to understand tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that nothing just happens in this earth realm. Say after me, nothing just happens. Shout it, nothing just happens. Prosperity doesn't just come. Listen, healing doesn't just come. A family does not just receive breakthrough. Are you getting my point? Things don't just happen. There is nothing called mistake in the realm of the spirit. That language, that grammar does not exist. Hallelujah. Everything you see happen was made to happen. Are you getting my point? Everything, good or bad, when you see anything happen, there are influences that cause these things to happen in the earth realm. And the reason why the Lord gives us the keys of the kingdom is so that we can regulate the things that happen and compel them to be consistent with the word of God. Hallelujah. Nothing just happens. It was a revelation that delivered me. That means... That language of whatever will be, will be. Have you heard people sing that song? That godless song, whatever will be, will be. If you leave your farm without planting, something will grow. What is the name? In primary science, what did they teach you that a weed is? It's a plant. It's just that it's unwanted. There are many unwanted things in our lives. And if we keep waiting and saying one day I know that God in the sweet by and by, one day things will change. Let me tell you the truth, you may stay like that forever. It will take you engaging certain violent kingdom principles to keep Satan where he belongs. And I'll just be sharing with us a few keys tonight. Hallelujah. If you ever experience anything in your life, there must be a basis in the spirit. He said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted, O ye ancient doors. What did the gates say? They said, who is this king of glory? In other words, we will not just open up because you are speaking English. Who is this king? What is the basis? Introduce this personality that is attempting to open this door. And he said, he is the king of glory. The Lord strong and mighty. 
there must be a basis based on what revelation will Satan release your family based on what revelation will the prosperity and breakthrough come in based on what revelation will the terminal disease go based on what revelation will your family members come back again based on what revelation will you receive the child based on what revelation will the tumor and the cancer die there is a basis brothers and sisters and if you cannot present that course, if you cannot present your basis like your card in the spirit, you may never move forward. Hallelujah. I'd like to share four powerful revelations. Four powerful revelations very quickly. Believe me. Listen. There are many of you as I teach as these revelations come, you will walk out of the chains of your life. Just walk. You will not even need to pray. You will walk out and leave the chains. The Bible says, listen, the Bible says an angel came and met Peter in the prison. Is that true? And the Bible says when he came on their own, the chains broke. Nobody needed any key to open anything. The word of God itself is a key. You will find chains just falling and you just walk out. Number one, if you ever want to command authority and receive miracles in this realm, you must understand the revelation of the Lordship of Jesus. Everybody say the Lordship of Jesus. Everybody say the Lordship of Jesus. If you do not get this revelation, you are far from walking in power. The Lordship of Jesus. Many of you say Jesus is Lord, but we really do not understand that revelation. What does it mean to call Jesus Lord? What does it mean to be Lord? Please listen to me. These are simple revelations, but these are revelations that are the foundations for dislodging Satan and darkness. The revelation of the Lordship of Jesus. Acts chapter 2. Shatapa katapa latapa. Acts chapter 2. Blessed Jesus, thank you. Are you there? Acts chapter 2, verse 36. This was Peter the Apostle speaking. Acts 2, verse 36. It says, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus, both what? That he have crucified both Lord and Christ. He said, we are announcing to you that this Jesus you once crucified, today he has been made. That means until then he was not. Is that true? He has been made. A coronation service was held in heaven. And in that coronation service, a name was given to Jesus. Many of you say Jesus and nothing happens because you do not know the name. The name is not Jesus. Jesus is the name that a human being gave him when he was born. There are people in Mexico today called Jesus. Is that true? There was a name that was given to him. What is that name? The name is not Jesus. For instance, the Bible prophesying, Isaiah speaking, he said you shall call him Emmanuel. Did they ever call Jesus Emmanuel? But the Bible says that will be his name. The name means his office, his identity. An office of operation was given to him. That based on that office, certain things become possible in the earth realm. That was the coronation service that the psalmist saw. He said the Lord said to my lord he didn't say the savior said to my savior he didn't say the master he said the lord said to my lord sit down at the right hand until your enemies be made your footstool that was the coronation service he saw and philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 it says let this mind permit this mindset be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And then you read it down to 10 and 11. And it says, Wherefore, 
God had so highly exalted him. Who exalted him? Highly exalted Jesus and gave Jesus a charisma, an office, an identity. And he said, every time that office is invoked, certain things should happen in the earth realm. Hallelujah. He says, wherefore God had so highly exalted him and given him a name that at the mention, at the, at, at, at the what? Where is it? It says at the name, it even said the mention, at the name of Jesus. What happens? Every knee. Cancer. What again? It's in your prayer request. Call it. Ah, we have a lot of poverty to destroy tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says, of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and even the things under the earth. It says, and every tongue will have to confess that that Jesus, verse 11 now, that Jesus has now become Lord. That's the name that was given. The name is Lord. And Lord means master, owner. The authorized legislator. That's what it means. So the name was given. When Jesus was upon the earth, the name was not yet given. That's why it was not possible for him to perform miracles in certain places. When he sent the 70, he said, don't go to certain places. The jurisdiction of my power has not reached there. But when he was coronated in heaven, he came back now. He said, all power has now been given unto me. He said, go therefore in light of the fact that I have become Lord. Hallelujah. You must have the revelation of the Lordship of Jesus. Hallelujah. So that you can look at this challenge, this mountain, and impose the Lordship. Notice every time the Bible talks about dominion, we use that word Lord. Psalm 24, it says the earth is the Lord. It didn't say the earth belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. You must have the revelation of that Lordship. He's not trying to be Lord. Hear me. I said it last week, a week before last. The opposite of Jesus is not Satan. That Sunday school teaching is wrong. Are you getting me? I'm not blaming your Sunday school teachers. I'm just saying that teaching is not scriptural. So many of us imagine that the opposite of Jesus is Satan. It's just that Jesus is a little more than Satan. No, not at all. If there is any opposite to Satan, it's Archangel Michael, not Jesus. Because it was, it was Archangel Michael that took care of him. Remember? He met him again in the, book, in, in the book of Jude, trying to take the body of Moses. He said, again, again, what happened in heaven is not enough for you. The Bible says in Revelations, at the Armageddon, the Bible says, Jesus will not even fight. All he will do is open his mouth and a double-edged sword will come out of his mouth and do the job. i like you to say he's a mighty God. Say it is a mighty God. Bigger than my problem. Bigger than all the demons that oppress my family. Hallelujah. Revelation number two. Is that Satan and every demon. They have been defeated at the cross. You must get this. You must get this brothers and sisters. That Satan, just, just, I, I pray for you, please listen. I'm, I'm trying to break it down. I want you to understand it and walk away free. You will see how cheap Satan is. Everybody says Satan has been defeated. Demons have been defeated. Absolutely, you must believe this. If you do not believe this, then there is no basis for you to receive your healings and miracles. Hallelujah. Satan has been defeated. He was defeated on the cross. Colossians, quickly. 
Colossians 2 verse 15. Faith is rising in somebody's heart. Somebody is getting angry. The word of God is reminding you again that Satan has been defeated. Colossians, please. Colossians 2, verse 15. Let's start from verse 14. Colossians 2, from verse 14. It says, blotting out every handwriting. Is that in your Bible? And every ordinance that was against us, which was contrary to us, the Bible says he took it out of the way and did what? He nailed it to the cross. Verse 15, it says, haven't spoiled. The word spoiled here is plunder. Haven't plundered what? Principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly. He triumphed over them in it. He made a public show. Triumphing over them. I need you to understand that Satan has been defeated. This is a revelation you must get. Oh, how can Satan be defeated when there are real issues? Don't worry, just follow me. There are two more revelations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you must believe that Satan has been defeated. That every demon, no matter their strata, no matter their levels, they have been defeated. Nailed on the cross. One more scripture. Hebrews 2 verse 14. Shiba balakata pratishala. Hebrews 2 verse 14. I'm sharing with you that which will become the basis for your receiving tonight. This is the difference between a miracle and magic. Hallelujah. Verse 14. Are you there? It says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death, that means through his dying, he may destroy him that had the power of death. In case you are confused, that is the devil. Hallelujah. It says that he may destroy. The word destroy does not necessarily mean stop the person from cessation. But strip him off of every ability. The devil. Satan has been stripped of his ability. Now I'm going to explain. When I finish with the other two, we're going to put a balance. But I need you to know this. That Jesus is Lord Satan has been defeated. Every demon, every foul, unclean spirit of darkness has been defeated. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Number three. The third revelation you must have tonight is that you have legal rights in Christ to experience total victory. You have what? Not just rights, legal rights. On account of no point one and two, today if you are in Christ, you have legal, legitimate right to place a demand and refuse and insist that you must experience total victory in your life. You have legal right. Let's look at two scriptures quickly. Romans chapter 4 from verse 25. Romans chapter 4. Shatabakata baladaba. Romans 4 verse 25. Are you there? Who was delivered for our offenses? Delivered in exchange for our offenses. And he says, raised up for our justification. He was delivered on our behalf. That means what I would have suffered, Jesus said, hold on, I will go for you. He was delivered on account of our offenses. And the Bible says, when he was raised up, he told us that is it. There is no, you are not guilty. There is no offense. Help me, help me technical, please. 
Praise the Lord. Raised up for our justification. 5 verse 1 and 2. Quickly. Still Romans. Romans 5. Therefore, being justified by faith. Say, I have been justified by faith. The word justified means you have been declared not guilty. You have been declared free to receive. Free to receive. The accusation no longer exists because someone took your place. Hallelujah. Where are we? Romans 5 verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. By whom also we have access. Say I have access. Access by faith into his grace. That means by faith I can access all the packages that redemption has brought for me. I have legal access. I have legal access. I have legal access. This is what the Bible says. Hallelujah. So that if there are any cultural barriers, there are all kinds of things that try to impede me, the Bible tells me I have legal access. Hallelujah. Number four. If you have been sleeping, this is where I want you to wake up now because what you are going to hear is what will tie up these revelations. And this is where the body of the Lord Jesus Christ have been missing it. Let's review the revelations. Number one, the revelation of the Lordship of Jesus. Number two, the fact that Satan and demons have been defeated. Totally. They will not be defeated. They have been defeated. Hallelujah. Number three, you have legal access on account of the fact that Christ died and rose again. He has opened the way. The Bible says the curtain of the temple tore from top to bottom. Meaning that anyone could now pass. Hallelujah. But the fourth revelation is the missing link. Why many people in the body of Christ, although these things have been established, they may not be able to walk in victory number four it takes faith and the application of kingdom principles to walk in the experiential reality of these truths it takes faith and it takes the application of kingdom principles this is the part that has confused and cheated a lot of people in the church it takes what Say it takes faith. One more time. It takes faith. And the application of kingdom principles to walk in the reality of these things. Now look up please. I need you to understand the language of the Bible and the way God communicates. When you understand the way God communicates, you will know that there are certain things we need to do to make this become real in our lives today. For instance, have you read in your Bible that the Bible says right from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain? Is that true? Have you read it in your Bible? Question, when did Jesus die experientially? Over 2,000 years ago. But then in the eye of God, as far as God is concerned, from the foundations of the earth, the lamb had been slain. Are you getting my point? When the Lord appeared to Gideon, what did he call Gideon? This was a man who was hiding. Is it not in your Bible? It says, Oh thou mighty man of valor. That means it is in the character of God. It's not his fault. He does not have time in between. He is Alpha Omega. So it is from that standpoint that he speaks. So whether he's standing from the beginning or the end, it doesn't make any difference. Are you getting my point? Let me show you one scripture. Psalms 119 verse 89. Psalms 119. The deliverance has started already. For many of us, this is the ultimate deliverance that will happen to you this night. Psalms 119 verse 89. Hallelujah. 
Let's read it. Forget about the L-A-M-E-D. Read the rest. One to read. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Stop. Where? Did he say in the earth? He said thy word is settled. Where? Let's read on. I'm going to shock you now. Next verse, please. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. He said, thou hast established the earth and it abided. 91. They continue this day according to thy ordinances for all are thy servants. Next verse, please. Unless thy law had been my delight, I should have perished in my affliction. Hold on. What is the psalmist saying? He's saying, oh Lord, forever your word has settled. But he said, if not that I got these principles, I would have still died in my affliction. Is that in your Bible? So although your word is settled, but my escape route was that your law had been my delight. I searched out diligently to find out how to apply those principles. Otherwise, I would have perished in my affliction. 93. It says, I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. What did he use to actualize that revelation? His precepts, his laws, his principles. Are you getting me now? So although it is true that Christ died for every sickness, every infirmity, this is the difference between miracle and magic. Brothers and sisters, listen. A magician will just conjure everything. All he needs is your money and your common sense. But the word of God is not magic. It is faith in this revelation that will make it become true in your life. Are you getting my point now? Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. But he went on to say, I will not forget your precepts. In other words, although your word is settled, if I don't know how to actualize it, I will still die in my affliction. Hallelujah. Is that in your Bible? One more scripture. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 5 to 8. Very interesting scripture. This is where the body of Christ has been missing it. Oh, hallelujah. I now told you Jesus is Lord. And now we confess Jesus is Lord. Satan is defeated. I have legal rights. Prosperity is mine. Health is mine. And demons just keep looking at you. And say, didn't they finish the training for you? Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 2 from verse 5. It says, for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come. Whereof we speak. Verse 6. It says, but one in a certain place. That certain place is Psalm 8. Remember, Psalm 8, the Psalm of David. What is man that thou art mindful of him? Okay. So, but one in a certain place testified saying... What is man that thou art mindful of him? Not the son of man that thou should visit him. Verse 7. Thou hast made that man a little lower than the word angels. There is the word Elohim. It's not just angels, angelos like spirit beings. No. Elohim, God himself. You have made him a little lower than God. And you did what? You crowned him with glory and honor. And then you set him over all the works of your hands. So this is Paul speaking. The one who gave us the revelation of the Pauline epistles. That tells us what we are in Christ. According to Ephesians 1, 2 and 3. And the book of Colossians. The same Paul is speaking to the Hebrew church. Hallelujah. And he's telling them that. Although you have crowned him with glory and honor. And you have set him over the works of your hands. Next verse please. Verse 8. Everybody. Thou hast put all things in subjection. Stop. This is the part many people know. You have put all things in subjection under his feet. He says, for in that he put all things in subjection under him. He left nothing. This is God speaking. As far as God is concerned, there is nothing. That should not yet be under the feet of man. He said, but now. But from our perspective. Is that true? Read on. Want to read. But now. We see not yet all things under him. 
So although the Bible says God has done everything, it says experientially, we do not yet see that in our lives today. Although God has said everybody should be blessed, although God has said you will not look for a mate, you will not look for a husband or wife, we do not yet see the people in your family married. Is that true? Although God has said you should get supernatural jobs, promotion and the rest, we do not now yet see all things. This is where faith and the application of kingdom principles come in. This is where meetings like this come in. Are you getting my point now? If you don't understand the missing link, and this is what a lot of our brothers and sisters around the body of Christ have cheated people in. They just tell them, no, it is settled. Believe it. Receive it. Go and sleep. You have been sleeping for years. Things have not changed. Because this is a missing link. So, when you begin to apply kingdom principles, you are not fighting the word. You are aligning with this revelation because it is the basis for the action you are taking. Are you getting me now? And when your obedience is complete, you will now be ready to judge every disobedience. Are you, are you understanding me now? Please get this principle. Don't let anybody confuse you at all. A lot of people have problems when we lay hands on the sick and when we get people delivered and when we release people from yokes and curses and bondages and they think we are neglecting what the Bible is saying. When we say there are people under all kinds of witchcraft activities and the rest, they say, ah, but the Bible says blotting out every handwriting. The Bible says now, although this is the template God is giving us, we do not yet see all things. So it takes faith and the operation of the principles of the kingdom to compel it to be done in the earth as it is already in the heavens. That was what Jesus taught us, isn't it? He said, when you pray, say, let it be done in the earth. That means it has not yet been done until that time, but it has been settled in the heavens. Hallelujah. Is somebody following me now? So many of you will see that this may be the missing link. Why although you have been confessing the word, somebody who does not tithe and keeps saying money comes, prosperity comes, oh my door is open, you are going to die a broke failure. No matter how you convince yourself you are prosperous, you are poor, and you are going to, listen, your poverty is so bad because it will affect other people. It will become a mindset and you will teach other people. It will be a chain reaction. But when you begin to tithe, what happens? You are not tithing because you are doubting the blessing of God upon your life. You are tithing in partnership with the Holy Spirit. Koinonia. You are partnering with the word. It is the spirit and the bride that tells the word to come. So when the spirit and the bride, the spirit supplies revelation to the church, the bride, and together we now say, let this word become flesh. And the Bible says that spirit, immaterial word, became flesh, it gained substance, and it appeared before men. And we beheld it. We beheld it. Although it is settled, we've not yet beheld it. And so he said, let us, let us say the kingdom come by your will, your precepts, your counsel being done in the earth realm. Are you getting my point? There are many people who are confessing. There's no cause of my life. I don't have anything. I'm free. That's wonderful. But let me see what kingdom principles you are operating to back up what you are saying. James said, show me your faith. Is that true? How did he put it now? It says, show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by my works. Not the works of the law. My practicalizing kingdom principles on account of the word that I've received. My response, obedient response. Hallelujah. We do not yet see all things. So it's not foolishness. For you to say, the prosperity has not yet manifested in my life. The healing has not yet manifested. But the Bible tells me it is settled. You see that? Are you getting my point? So when somebody says, ah, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not feeling very strong today. Somebody says, oh God, what kind of English? No, this is not faithlessness. Please, don't confuse yourself. Are you getting my point? 
is not wrong coin. Come, Jordan. We are looking for 1,000 naira to pay for something experientially. We need the money now. We need to pay for it. And I said, Jordan, do you have 1,000? I'm not neglecting the fact that the Bible says you are the head and not the tail. But at this time, we do not yet see all things under your feet. So you say, bros, I'm a believer. This word is working. It's just that right now, it has not yet appeared. Is that lack of faith? Is that lack of faith? This is the wisdom the Bible says is profitable to direct. Rather than embarrassing yourself to say, I have it. If God gives you a rema at that point, you stand upon that rema. This is why a lot of Christians are doing stupid things in the body of Christ. And we call it faith. See, I believe in violent faith. Don't get me wrong. Are you getting my point? But I am saying faith is acting upon a word, not emotions, not presumptions. Hallelujah. For instance, although the Bible declares that no inhabitant, thank you sir, no inhabitant in Zion shall say I am sick. The, the reality right now is that there are some people who need a miracle in their body. Is that true? Although the Bible says your marriage shall be a blessing. It says your children surround your table. You will see your children's children. There are some families that the war you left as you are sitting quietly right now. You know that this war is not what the Bible says should happen. Is that true? And this is why we enforce these things. The last point. And then. Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. A habalist tells you, bring 10,000 nera. Bring the head of a black fowl. Turn around. Sit down. Shout, ah, three times. They do all those things. You don't even know what you are doing. You just see smoke somewhere. They'll say, go, it's done. And you go and you are hoping that it will be done. If it's not done, you can't accuse him. You can't report him to the police. You can't do anything. You just get angry and look for another person. But the Bible shows you so that you can be a blessing to others. You see the difference between herbal medicine and the word of God? It is repro You can reproduce the results again and again. We are with Deuteronomy 28. From verse 1. It shall come to pass, the Bible says, if thou shalt diligently hearken unto the voice of the Lord. To do what? To observe and to do. Not to think and to confess. To do what? To observe. Pay attention. Ensure that you are complying. It says, and to do. All that I command thee this day. How many? All. The area you obey God in is the area you will receive breakthrough. All that I commanded this day. It says that the Lord will set thee above all nations of the earth. Verse 2. And it says, and all these blessings. How many blessings? All these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. What's the condition? If thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God. Brothers and sisters, it takes faith. It takes the application of the principles of the kingdom. That's why the Bible says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Say the keys of the kingdom. It is only when you hold on to those keys that you can bind and lose. Many people are binding and losing. See, to bind and lose does not mean to say, I bind, I lose. To bind and use means to, to use those keys. It is the keys. Are you getting my point? That will enforce the binding and losing. A key like tithing releases open heavens. A key like giving releases favor, wisdom, creativity. A key like sacrifice compels the hand of God in your direction. Are you getting my, my point? A key like obedience, obedience to parents, releases longevity. A key like the communion, releases health and vitality to your body. 
and sets you free from all kinds of devils and yokes. A key like honor opens the door of access for you. A key like your gift brings you before grace. Are you seeing all the keys now? So the losing and binding is not just saying, I bind, I bind, I lose. Uh -uh. The binding and losing is supposed to be the resultant effect of something. This revelation has cheated many of our brothers and sisters in the body of Christ who will not allow humility or arrogance to let them learn and say that I may not be getting this thing very well. There are some of your loved ones at home. If you try to explain this thing for them now, they will argue with you and insult you. Yet they are suffering. Yet they are suffering. And the truth is, it's affecting you. I know, I know. This thing is not work. I know it will work. Ten years is not working. I know it will work. Faith is not foolishness. The end of true faith is a manifestation. If your car is moving and is moving slow, there is hope for arrival. But if you sit inside the car and it's not moving at all, are you going to arrive? Let me add one more point. In light of all of this, it means ministering deliverance, ministering healing, and all of these other things do not fight the reality of the finished work of Christ. Ministering deliverance. There are many ministries that don't believe in deliverance. Now, and I know when I say deliverance, that's a relative language. We have all kinds of things we call deliverance. I mean Bible-based scriptural deliverance with proof. Are you getting my point? This is what I'm talking about. Ministering deliverance. Many people are offended when they see demons being casted out of people. When they see us praying for people to be healed. When they see us breaking yokes from people. They say, no, it's not necessary. How many times do you need to see it right here? Praise the Lord. To know that Satan is oppressing. There are many arrogant families that are dying. They are under yokes and covenants of darkness. Nothing is working at all. But the humility to say something might be wrong. Now I've taught you, it's not lack of faith. Hallelujah. When we stand to proclaim deliverance and healing, what we are doing is we are applying kingdom principles taking advantage of the lordship of Christ the anointing of the spirit and all the weapons of victory we'll still continue our spiritual warfare series and then we'll talk on our weapons of victory to be able to compel the word to walk today here and now in your life hallelujah Psalm 66 verse 3. Just write it. We won't read it because of time. It says, how all inspiring are your ways. I love the scripture too much. It says, through the greatness of thy power, shall thy enemies, do what? Submit. Through the greatness of thy power, not just the greatness of your wishing, through the greatness of the power you exert on them, they will give up and submit. Hallelujah. Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you power. Behold, see, conceive as a reality in your spirit. I give you power. I give you authority over snakes. There is your whole snake thing again. Those who have problems with snakes and scorpions. The Bible would have said, I give you power over Satan. Period. Snakes and scorpions and all the power of the enemy... It says, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Let's look at one scripture. Mark 6, verse 7 and 13. Many families need deliverance. Let me tell you the truth. Many of the people who think they need healing, honestly speaking, what they need is not healing. What they need is to be delivered. I've taught you on biblical deliverance. I'm not just talking of these funny things people do. Read verse 7, everybody. One to read. And he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth two by two and gave them power over power 
over unclean spirits. That means there were unclean spirits roaming around. Roaming around. And he gave them power. He said, every time you see them, put them where they belong. Hallelujah. Verse 13. 13. One to read. And they cast out how many? Many devils. And anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. That means not every sickness is necessarily demonic. Are you getting my point? Don't bath for one month, something will happen to you. Don't brush for one week, something will happen to you. These things are not necessarily caused by demons. They are just caused by carelessness. Carelessness. Hallelujah. But they say they cast out many demons. Did they cast out the demons from trees? The demons were in human beings. Hallelujah. Now the last thing I need to explain before we begin to pray is four levels of the operation of Satan and demons in people's lives. I know that we are on a spiritual warfare series, but that's for another time. But for now, I want you to have it, please. I want you to get this because many people have been confused. Some of you, the first time you came here, you were minding your own business. You were even the president of your ministry or your church. You were the pastor. You came and said, I just want to learn one or two things. Before they would say anything, you had broken the bench and you were rolling and you found yourself in the front here. And your member said, Pastor, ha, what happened? You have been healing the sick. This one that you are rolling up and down like this. What happened? And now the person is confused. And one prophet somewhere will say, I told you your pastor is possessed. I have always known it. No. I want to clear this right now. Is that true? Now, there are four levels of the operations of Satan in the lives of people. And this even includes believers. I will tell you why. Hallelujah. Number one. Ignorance. 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 This is the basis, the foundation. Hallelujah. Ignorance. Satan thrives on ignorance. The Bible says in Psalm 82, he said, They know not. When you begin to read from verse 5 down, it says, They know not. You mustn't go there. They know not, neither do they understand. Therefore, they grope in darkness, confusion, and the earth is out of course. He said, but have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but ye shall die like men, men, and fall like one of these princes. So they know not ignorance. See, this is why if you're born, listen, if you get somebody born again, the next step is that the person will need to subject himself to the teaching ministry of the word. Are you getting me? The kingdom is like a school. You don't just know things just like that. When you are taught the word, then you are built understanding, comprehension. Are you getting me? Many of you get people born again and just leave them. And after two years, the people don't even know whether they are born again or not. They say, were you born again? They say, you mean coming out? Yes, I came out. But the person is not born again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So ignorance. Number two, deception. This is the next level. Everybody said deception. Deception is very powerful. Deception means to cause a man to err, to get into error. Deception. For instance, secular humanism is deceiving a lot of people, including the church, that there is nothing called Satan. That's deception. Is that true? Deception. They say the only Satan, the only devil you have is your mind. Destroy that devil and let the giant, they say put your hand in your stomach, begin to push it up. You are awakening the This is Christian science. This is metaphysics. Of course, I know there is greatness in you. The Bible says there is this treasure. But you don't do all kinds of metaphysical things. Uh-uh. There is a real devil. He's alive, roaming to and fro. Hallelujah. Deception. Number three, 
And this is the one that concerns a lot of people. Manipulation and control. You must get this. The third level of the operation of Satan. And this is where a lot of people, a lot of people, even those we call witches and wizards. Let me tell you the truth. Look up. There are very few witches and wizards in this earth. If you know the condition to be a witch, you will know it's not free. It's not just signing fraternity with Satan. No. Hallelujah. Many of the people we call witches, many of our innocent mothers and fathers that prophets say they are witches and wizards, they are not. Are you getting me? Many of our husbands and wives, right now there are prophets destroying homes and families. Somebody just stands and looks at this lady and says this lady is a witch. You know what he saw? He probably saw a spirit behind this lady or he saw a vision and something that has to do with demonic manipulation. He just said he's a witch. Are you getting me? And everybody starts frowning at the lady at home. You do everything. He said, Ida Ma, we said it. Witch, or the wizard, or it's wrong. We have stigmatized people in the body of Christ. Listen to me, please. Many people, and those who are in the prophetic, be warned. Many people out of ignorance have called people witches and wizards. We have called our fathers and our mothers. A woman who was there with her husband, suffered with him. Now you say she's a witch. When she married the man, he had nothing. They were drinking gari together. They now suffered. God is blessing him. A prophet now comes to say, Oh, it is true that that woman may be under yokes of darkness. Don't get me wrong. She may be under demonic manipulations that can even make her act out scripts that she did not plan. But that does not mean she's a witch. Are you getting my point? Even Paul the apostle explained this predicament. In Romans chapter 7, Paul began to speak. He said, with my spirit, I serve the Lord. He said, but in my body, I see another law working in my members. So that the things I do not want to see, I do not want to do, I find myself. So, you don't want to watch the pornography, but you don't know what happens. Once you load your internet, you just sit down. And although you are a man of God, or any lady you see, you just have lustful thoughts or people's properties. You can't see any, even if you don't need it, you carry it. This is a sign that there is demonic manipulation and control. Are you seeing that? You come back from church, your father just looks at you and starts quarreling and arguing. It's a sign that something is wrong. Anger is the clearest litmus test that you need help. Are you getting me? What did I say? Anger. I shared it with the school of ministry students. When we were teaching, I can't remember the course now. <laughs> Besides, anyway. <laughs> Praise God. I, are, you, are, you, are you following me now? Anger. Anger is the first sign that you need help. If you are battling with anger, I mean this kind of anger that you can break bottle with your leg, and tear somebody's head to two and then later you fume and you calm down. You need help. Don't ever say it's from our family. Whether it's from where you need help quick. There are many angry pastors. There are many angry reverends. There are many angry husband and wife. Many angry people. Five areas of your life. That when you see it consistently affected, seek help quick. Number one, your relationship with God. Relationship with God. Your relationship with God. Oh, the last point there is possession. Let me just finish it up. The last point is demon possession. That's the case we have with people like madmen, witches, wizards, occultists. Those that know they are occultists. They fly around and do all kinds of satanic things. Right? Now, look at me. The confusion is this. When you are ministering deliverance to people, if, if you don't discern in the spirit, all of those five things, the manifestation looks the same. Are you getting me? Whether someone is under the spirit of deception 
or under any kind of demonic yoke or influence, any kind of curse, whatever it is, you find out that sometimes manifestation, I mean falling down, is not necessarily a biblical sign. Are you getting me? The revelation of the word of God going forth. So it has nothing to do with falling and rising. That manifestation is just because of the fire of the word of God. And there are different operations of the spirit that are responsible for bringing this victory. Hallelujah. The Bible says when he comes, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. What was I saying? Before we... Uh, not five. I was saying something. Some of you are not listening. Eh? Five areas. Number one, your relationship with God. This is because this is your connection to victory. So you see somebody who loves God. He may even be a pastor. But the next thing, this person has left God. Have you seen people like that? Left God so much. When you see and say, ah, sister. When you were on campus, you were on fire. You loved God. What happened? You are even camping in a guy's house. You are staying there. She tells you, sweet, this is Nigeria. Don't open eye for me here. This is not any koinonia or anything. Please. You see that Satan affects your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He uses these tools, I've told you, to affect. Because once he cuts that flow, you are already in trouble. The second area, so relationship with God and men. Let's just call that point one. God and men. You find out that your father who used to love you, your mother who used to love you, all of a sudden things start changing. How many of you have seen people like that? They start, you, you start irritating them. Even them, they don't know why what is happening. That's a sign that you should deal with. See, I'm giving you spiritual intelligence so that when you see certain things happening, your father and your mother, that when they come back, you know they're around because you hear a big kiss. Mwah! Now, when they're around, where is the food now? Uh -uh, something is wrong. Something is wrong. After marrying his wife for 20 years and they're fighting now and they're saying it's, it's irritable. Mm -mm, something is wrong. Be, I'm saying this because when we get up and we begin to pray, you know what it is so that even when you are being delivered or being set free, you know what is happening to you and you will rejoice. Are you getting my point? Number three, finances. Number what? Number two, sorry, finances. A hole will suddenly be created in your pocket. There are people who walk like like elephants. Have you seen people like that? Your boss just comes to you in the office and say, I don't know why. I don't like you. Please, you are fired. Ah, but you are fired. Come back tomorrow and collect the letter. I told you nothing just happens. Is that true? Nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Number three, your health. Heterogeneous sicknesses start evolving from everywhere. Especially ladies. One headache that comes like play and it doesn't go back again. You start hearing all kinds of sounds in your ears. All kinds of satanic things. And many of us just hear it and you just say paracetamol. You take it, nothing happens. I'm telling you this thing so that for many of you who think you don't even, nothing is wrong with you. As I share it right now, you will see that you really need help. Hallelujah. Number what now? Have I said it or I'm about to say it? Number four. This one is very, very important. If you are married or marriage relationship, I mean, because family is a big deal to the devil. Are you seeing why when we minister to people, we don't leave their families behind? Family. There are many of us, your family members were living in peace. Suddenly, one demonic tornado just came into your family and has scattered everything. If your father is driving in the car with your mother, you know. He will face east. Your mother will face west. Where did you say is the junction? This way. And you are turning. You just know that something is wrong. Let me tell you, there are some things that are not the issue of counseling. You don't counsel spirits out. You cast them out. This therapeutic 
I'm not against if you if you read guidance and counseling, we need your ministry. May God bless you. Just add the anointing to it because let me tell you the truth. Just trying to counsel people. You can't counsel a man out of lust and pornography. Say, you see, uh, uh, the way we are like this, just make sure, destroy the, the modem and do all. No. You need help. Or say, don't be looking at ladies. What is the meaning of that? There are, the world is full of all kinds of ladies you don't have control over. Why will you punish me and say I should not look at where everywhere? Or, you know, this is, this is the religion that many of us are taking around. Oh, in Jesus' name, I'm not seeing this girl. She's not beautiful. This lady is pretty. My brother, you need help. You need help. Period. Why is this lady dressing like that? That may be a factor, but you yourself, it has nothing to do. Even if she dresses from head to toe, you know you are not well the way you are. You need help. A lot of people excuse the need for help in their own life and keep blaming people. Why is this lady sitting down near me now? You need help. When we are praying, stand up and say, God, visit me. I'm tired of this miserable life. Visit me. I hope as you are laughing, you are getting angry. There are many hypocrites in the body of Christ pretending to have overcome a lot of things that is killing them down. There are many people who are greedy, as greedy as the devil. They will just pretend, oh, I may give, mm -mm. See, once you see yourself struggling to do certain things, it's a sign that there is no grace walking there. Hallelujah. And tonight we are going to deal with it. How many of you have seen our fathers? They come to church and they say, fathers, turn to your wife. They turn to your wife and your mother will eye him. Let everybody know there is trouble at home. Don't fake anything here. Let the pastor see it per adventure. God will reveal it to him and will solve the problem. You know, I counsel people. And sometimes when the man is trying to be diplomatic, the mother will say, man of God, this is what is happening in this family. There is no peace. Period. The man is trying to say, well, since uh, I didn't get the promotion, things have not been happening. The wife would just say, since this suffering didn't start today, even before you got the job. You see, if you have an open heart before God, you are ready to be delivered. Once you start giving flimsy excuses, Tonight, there's no excuse. Whatever does not look like the Garden of Eden in your life, contend for it until it leaves. Your contention, I've taught you, is not a sign that you are not a Christian. It's a sign that you are interested in seeing the reality of heaven become true in your life. Hallelujah. Curses are real. Yokes are real. Demonic covenants are real. Many families are under its influence. You don't cast out demons and principalities and powers and satanic manipulations just by saying, oh, Satan, go. The Bible says, for this kind, they overcame them by blood. The blood of the lamb and the words of their testimony. That's why there are many people. That, please listen to me. If you get this, there will be big deliverances in your families and in your life. And then you will see that that thing you were calling sickness just disappears. Never to return again. Hallelujah. Are you ready for what God is going to do in this place right now? While I was writing my prayer request, I said, God, tonight is tonight. I want you to mean business with God. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Instrumentalist. We are going to pray very serious prayer for two minutes. Please rise up everybody. It's time for your destiny to open up. It's time for your destiny. Listen. There are many of us here. You are the saviors that are representing your family right now. You know what I'm saying. There are certain families you are even the only one who is saved. And you know that if God does not use you to produce changes, things will never change. 
you are this savior that is arising from Zion hallelujah praise the Lord we are going to pray hallelujah lift your voice and begin to give God thanks inside and outside for this word please no distraction no roaming up and down please pray from your heart inside and outside the power of God is everywhere please pray 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 like you mean business tonight you're not murmuring your prayers you're praying Zapakata la bakata brekata baladaba. Zende brekata leke proska. Yes, Lord, we thank you for your power. We thank you for your grace. Zapata la brekata boya. Mam bredisa katali bakoshe katale brekata baba baba baba. Lord, you will visit me. Lift up your voice and pray. Lord, you will visit me. You will visit my finances, my job, my marriage, my family. You will visit everything about my life and everything that is not in divine alignment. I permit you to change it tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Twice the Lord revealed to me the things that will happen this night. Twice. I spoke about deliverance because tonight is truly a night of deliverance. I know many of you have seen deliverance, but this night we are flogging it out with destiny. Something must open up. Hallelujah. And I prayed, I said, Lord, please, let it not just be a few people. There are people who need a miracle desperately. Hallelujah. And the Lord assured me as ever, his mighty presence. My altar is calling you. My altar is, is calling you. My worship is calling you, oh God. My praise is calling you. Show up tonight in a mighty way. My secret place is calling you, oh God. My prayer. Is calling you, Lord. My worship is calling you, Lord. We invoke your presence in this place. My altar is calling you, Lord. My altar. I don't care what it is hear me I don't care what it is every yoke of bondage and darkness you will receive the full dose of God's power tonight hallelujah hallelujah I sense his anointing coming man brought Lord, my altar is calling you. My secret place is calling you. With my worship, I'm calling you. My worship. Hallelujah. 
see right from outside well this started while i was praying but right from outside as soon as i entered you know how prisoners move and they tie chains i was hearing the noise of many chains right from outside as soon as the car dropped please take serious what we are sharing tonight i want you to pray and say whatever degree of influence the devil is claiming over your life and your family this night this night please pray Yes, Lord. I hear the chains falling. Yes. I hear the chains falling. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. listen the Lord is showing me certain people you have been experiencing movements in your body especially your stomach please come out quickly things move physically physically in your body please come out quickly to break every chain please save our time save our time we have a lot of things to deal with to break every chain break every chain to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Those of you in front, lift your hands. That devil of darkness, lift your hands because that yoke is about to leave you. That snake, that moving object, for many of you, you will fully leave. I'm going to count three. Just those of you in front, I like you to shout Jesus at the count of three. It will jump out of you. Many of you will feel it physically. Physically, lift your hands, Father. Thank you. Let your fire, count of three, 
every stranger in this body yeah. on the mark said go now one two three holy shake up someone is gone now your right leg you literally feel it move it's like a snake it moves there is a leg it ties your stomach literally you feel a lot of contraction it's going right now madam come hold my hands that's the lady I'm talking about bring her let her go now now out of her. That devil of darkness. Shabakata tabakata. Sekete prosopata. In the name of Jesus. Out. Go. 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 I hear the chains falling. I prophesy upon your life. Those of you standing. Every foul devil of darkness that has found its way into your body that is responsible for all kinds of devilish infirmities. I command it to live now. I command it to live now. Return back to your seat rejoicing. We are going to take testimonies. Return back to your seat. Bring the lady. I hear the chains. I feel the chains falling. Let her go. Out. Now. I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. I see the chains. I see the chains falling. Lift your hands, everybody. I hear the Hallelujah. God is going to deliver families right now. Please lift your hands. There will be representatives of families right now. Let me tell you something. There are all kinds of things speaking against families. See, I have an apostolic calling. I'm not a pastor. Are you getting me? My job is not to just motivate you. My job is to destroy and annihilate the works of darkness. Are you getting my point? So we are going to pray. The fire that fall in this place right now. There will be a baptism of fire. Some of you will feel the physical fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. At the count of three. You are going to shout that name Jesus. And as you shout it, many of you will be shocked. The power of God will hit you like a tornado. I tell you, it's not just you. God is visiting families right now. Inside and outside, lift your voice. Worshippers, are you ready? At the count of three, with the clash of the cymbal, with every instrument, shout at the top of your voice, My God, let the fire of the Spirit visit families. Are you ready right now? One, two, three. Outside, outside, I release my power. 
out. So that devil is a liar tonight. Please bring them out, Ocha. Save time. Some of you join the Ocha if they are too slow. Please. Shaka ta 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 ta. Shake it, 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 it. I set it on fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. On fire. I set it. That devil that will not let you go must go for you tonight. I give the chain. Oh, I hear the chains. I hear the chains. Lift your hands. There are still more people. Lift your hands, everybody. Just lift your hands. Just lift your hands. Just the clash of the cymbal. Lift your hands. Just the cymbal. Lift your hands. The fire of God is still coming on people. Just lift your hands. Keep them lifted. Yes, Lord, let it come. 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 Like the dew of heaven. Right now, let it fall. Let no one stand. Bring them out. Zakatapata. Zakatakatatatata. Mighty deliverance is happening in this place. I tell you, brothers and sisters, whatever said you will not go tonight must go for you. I give the chains falling. falling. Lift your hands. We are still praying. There are many of you. Listen, please. I'm just throwing as the Holy Spirit is ministering to me. There are many of you that your sickness is not really sickness. Bring them out, please. Your sickness is a demonic oppression. What you need is not healing. For These are the kinds of people God will visit right now. Hallelujah. Because I'm seeing blue flames in the sky. Instrumentalists, don't stop playing, please. Hallelujah. Blue flames. And the Lord told me this one is to take away the spirits that sponsor sickness. Lift your hands. Many of you will be very surprised that certain things you have been calling diseases are yokes of darkness. Lift your hands, everybody. At the count of three, you are going to shout Jesus again. As you shout Jesus, many of you, those spirits will literally jump out. Jump out of your life. Are you ready now? Thank you, Jesus. Lift up your hands, everybody. Inside and outside, God is visiting everyone. At the count of seven, please, I want you to shout at the top of your voice. One, two, three, four, five. Get ready. Thank you, Jesus. Six, seven. Every spirit, spirits, spirits that sponsor sicknesses. Spirits, sicknesses, we only pray now. Sicknesses, now. What are the spirits responsible? I bless you. I bless you. The blood is against you now. The blood is against you now. The blood is against you now. things that manifest like sicknesses. You keep wasting your money on drugs. It's leaving you. Don't wait till you come out. 
Deliverances are happening to people. Now all of those who are here, Satan, you and every demonic cohort, at the count of three you are living right now. Hear me, all these spirits. Now one, two, three, go, 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 out, 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 out now, out, out, come out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. This is very important. The Lord is showing me someone you've been having. It's like something is hooking you on your neck. Just your neck. You try to cough as if you want to cough it out. Please, who is the person? The Lord is ministering to me. There's somebody with that situation. Please, once I call your case, don't waste our time. We are trying to beat time. Honestly, there is done. It will go now. Sister, look at me. Look at me. That thing will disappear. Hold my hands. Out. Now. In the name of Jesus. Hold my hands. Place one hand on your throat. Out. Now. All of you just lay your hands there. Let me just pray at once. Please, we are not playing pranks. We are going to take some testimonies right away. There are people who are receiving miracles right now. Please be checking yourself. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Lay your hands. Father, let this demonic thing that is hooking your people go as a sign of the release you are bringing. Right now, in the name of Jesus, it leaves. What's wrong with this baby? Come. Are you the mother? Yes, sir. What's wrong with him? Sometimes he's still hiccup. Hiccups. Look at this boy, as small as he is. Stops now. In the name of Jesus Christ. He stops and does not return again. In the name of Jesus Christ does not return again in the name of Jesus Christ. And for you mother, right now help her please. This, this cause of delay in your life is gone. Now, let her go. Leave her now. Jesus. I proclaim you healed now. Please go back and check yourself. Go back and check yourself. Hallelujah. There is someone here. Hallelujah. Please, are you listening to me? It's like muzzle pull. You can just be moving and it will hook you. And you can just stand on your leg. This has been happening again and again. You feel it like muzzle pull. It just holds your leg. Move. Please, who is the person? Come, just lay your hands there. They're praying for you right now. It will leave you right now.
Let's just flow as the Holy Spirit. Please lay your hands there. It is going to go. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now, let your power rest upon them and let that demonic thing go. Be gone now. 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 And as I lay my hands, just check yourself. Now. In the name of Jesus, do what you couldn't do. Do what you couldn't do. Check yourself now. Check yourself now. Check yourself. Check yourself. We'll take testimonies. Hallelujah. See, miracles are happening. Let's, let's just finish up and then we'll have time for testimonies. Hallelujah. Listen. The Lord is ministering to me and I'm seeing a lady. Hallelujah. Please, let's have our attention. The Lord is ministering to me. Show me a lady. You had, a th you saw a cat. Now, I don't know if it's physically or spiritually. You saw a cat. It came to fight with you. And from that time, you've not been feeling fine. You're feeling like there's something inside you. Who is the person? A cat. A cat. It's an encounter with a cat. The Lord showed me. Please, inside or outside. When we get that person, let, let the person come out quickly. Quickly. I need to pray for the person. This is very demonic and we must deal with it. A cat. You saw it. It came. I don't know what, what, what transpired, but it's a very demonic thing. Please, when we have the people, let's deal with it. Now, I'm going to pray for the sick. Those who are sick. Please, all of you who are sick, just come and line up. If you can form two lines, one in front, one at the back. Very quickly. You came here sick. Please. This is a miracle service. We're here for you. We are not in a hurry. Ushers, please coordinate them or protocol whoever. Coordinate them. Just make two lines, one in front, one at the back. Please hurry up. Worship us. Give us a very powerful worship while we get the devil out of these people's lives. Thank you. Now it's time for God to minister to the sick. While you're standing, talk to the Lord and say, Lord, it's over. It must leave me now. Exceedingly, abundantly, far above all. All you could ask. I want you to see that sickness for the last time because it's leaving you. According to. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your power to heal. Somebody help me. Please, as I lay hands on you, just begin to check yourself. Check yourself. God is able to do just what he says. Why? He said. 
llegaste a mí se oh, Aleluya oh. Aleluya Who brought this what's, what's the problem Your uh, father Who brought this small girl Auntie, where are you? Who is who brought this small girl? Please, if you bring people that are very small, come with them. Is you? Come, Auntie, come. What's wrong with her? She's sick. What do you mean she's sick? What's wrong with her? Cough. Eh? She's coughing. Oh, cough. Oh, okay, that's all right. God bless you, sweetheart. Look at me. You believe Jesus can heal you? You believe Jesus can heal you? Let me explain something. There are some of you who, when I pray for you, the way you are looking at me, it's as if you don't believe what I did. I ask you what is wrong. Are you getting me? I'm just flowing by the Spirit. When I lay hands, some of you are trying to explain and you feel bad that I'm not responding. I don't need to know. The same power will solve the problem. Are you getting my point? Occasionally, I may ask you, it is just, I'm just flowing as the Spirit is leading me, okay? Bless you, worshipers. Please continue.
praying for my son. I asked him to come here. But I don't know whether he's here. Daniel Ucheji. He's well, all right. He's, he's all right. He's all right, sir. Son, please. Daniel, what? Just about two, three months ago. So I've taken him to hospital. First hospital. What was the issue? What's the issue? Maybe like he put a lot of saliva in his mouth. His mouth has burned to one side. It's not working normal again. It's not smart. It's not working. It looks like an imbecile. When he was not born like this, this thing started like just about three months ago. Yes. What? See how wicked the devil is. What happened to him? I mean, what? What? According to him, he plays ball. He's a goalkeeper. According to him, he's a goalkeeper. He's, yes. He said he dived and hit his head on, on against stone. The first hospital I took to, they say he affected his head, his brain. But when I went to a teaching hospital last time, the consultant said there's nothing like that. But he fell to a pediatric. A clinic which we were given an appointment by February, but I believe God will work upon that. I say we should come here this morning. Absolutely. Look at me, boy. Does he understand me? Don't worry, don't worry, sir. It's okay. Look at me. Jesus will heal you right now. Huh? Hmm? Look at the boy crying. It's okay. Don't cry. This is why this meeting is put together. If this is the only guy that we heal. And he experiences the love of Jesus. Let me tell you, this sacrifice is worth it. Are you hearing me? Boy, look at me. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's all right. It's all right. So look at the fact. Oh, please, please, somebody help this man with a handkerchief. I beg you, sir. Please. Or anything. Please. Let's, let's. This is. Please, please, sir. It's, it's all right. It's all right. You may not know how much he has been spending. You see, this is a wicked thing. You see what pains me? This is why we deal with these things. It's all right. Please. Please. Please, daddy, it's all right. Because I know why you are crying. You are not just crying because of him. You are crying because your finances are tight. Is that true? This is what the Lord is ministering to me. Is that true? Yes, sir. That's why you are crying. You are not just crying. My mother has cancer. But I'm here for both this my son and my mother. I've been to you about two years ago. It's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Please, help him with it. Please. Brothers and sisters, when a man cries, the situation, this is not, I think this man is a police officer also. When a police officer is crying, thank God for koinonia. Boy, look at me. Can he talk? Say Jesus. Jesus. Say in the name of don't worry i'll pray for you that demon that is responsible for this you are leaving this boy now by the power of the holy ghost out now come out of him that issue of partial paralysis is gone right now that saliva is gone stand up me shout it say Jesus Jesus say Jesus Jesus say Jesus say Jesus hallelujah come on give Jesus a shout say Jesus hallelujah look at the father rejoicing look at give Jesus pray this is why this meeting is the Bible says, for this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. Come and join me, sing hallelujah. Sing Come on, and tell me where. Hey. Come on, tell me, sing hallelujah. Come on, dance. Come on, dance. Sing. Come on, tell me. Stand up, you stand up. Stand up. You couldn't walk very well. Walk now. Come, follow me. Jump, jump, 
Jump, jump, jump, jump. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Look at me. You are family members. I prophesy to you. Your finance changes now. I prophesy to you. And I use this as a point of contact. Whatever the devil has used to cripple your life. I speak it right now. See, when the Lord does a miracle, there is an anointing. You take advantage of it. Miracles are languages. I command everything that has refused to work in your life. This night, I command it to work. I command it to work. I command it to work. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Lord, the Lord increase you. Please let's continue. Go ahead and play. God is doing great things. We are still going to take some more testimonies. Hallelujah. Now, listen. Go back, sir. We are going to take a few testimonies. And Benga, let's do it this way. There are people receiving miracles right now. See, the moment you find a miracle, don't sit back. Hallelujah. Uh, ushers will help them. Once you check your body, there are many things changing right now. I want you to move here quickly. They'll come and confirm you and will allow you to share. To the shame of the devil, go ahead. Both those that I'm praying for, those in the congregation, those who were delivered, something happened to you. Go ahead and pray. God is doing mighty things here. Sabarai Kabani Nagode Out! Cheto The Lord is showing me a wicked spirit tying this lady down. Let her go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Out! Release her. And this delay, this thing you put in her stomach, take it out now. Take it out. Now. Let it go. Out! Just as you hold them, make sure you are praying in tongues. You must saturate the atmosphere with tongues. You don't just hold people like that. Devils are living. Whether it's through me or through you, they should go. Yes, Lord, let it go. By your power, by your fire. Oh, 
something coming out. Yes. The devil that wants to remain in your body he must let you go this night in the name of Jesus Christ. Very light. Yes. You are free in the name of Jesus. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Hallelujah. Any other testimony? Okay, while they come, let's just have the testimonies first. And Hallelujah. That's a powerful song. He's a miracle. Old school but powerful songs. Alpha, you are Alpha and Omega. He's a miracle. Hallelujah. the anointing I can do stupid things but I'm not just acting foolishly where's the water is it not the water you brought for me I said you should give her I didn't say you should collect it huh I know why I drank it and I gave her take my dear you just do what I asked you to do take it
There are three that bear witness in the earth. The spirit, the water. Lord, be cleansed now. That demon, I see you in the spirit already. Out you go. On your mark, get set, go. Go. Now. Go. Out of her. Out of her. And return no more. Cancer. That's what I said. Cancer. Uh, uh, uh. That one is it. Uh, that one is it. Doctors told you. Yes. Did you bring your report? No. You didn't bring your medical report. No. Prostrate cancer. Uh, that what they said. You believe Jesus will heal you? Why not? Right now. Yes. Daddy, God will heal you right yes. now. How many of you believe God will heal our daddy? Cancer, you are a spirit. And in the name of Jesus, depart from this body now. Together with all the symptoms, prostrate cancer, go. Go. You will go back to the hospital and they will not see a trace of cancer in your body. Let me use this opportunity to speak that everything that followed you here, representing shame, and representing reproach i stand upon this altar in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may shame and reproach be rolled away forever may shame and reproach be rolled away forever the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren that was his end but at the beginning, the Bible says, because the mother bore him in sorrow, she named him Jabez. But a time came, he was angry. He said, it's time for me to go forward. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast. Again, oh, let me speak over someone. It may be that there are limitations that have followed you for years. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is also the lifter of men, prophesy to you everything tying you down so that the only thing moving is your age nothing else is moving in your life i command let it be broken now 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 He called Lazarus out from the grave. He gave an instruction. He said, lose him and let him go. Let me speak to someone here. Whatever has tied you, 
in the name that is above all names by the power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead I declare be loose now be loose now be loose now be loose now please sit down The Bible, the Bible lets us know that in our walk with God, please pay attention, there are systems of advantage that can be introduced into the life of a believer that gives him an edge over life and over circumstances. Are we together now? in the dealings of god with men and captured all through scripture from genesis to revelation we see that there were men who were under all kinds of circumstances but that somewhere along their lives a system of advantage was introduced into their lives and it began to change the narrative of their lives Here's what the Bible says. For we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and those who are the called according to his purposes. Why is it that all things can work for good? Because regardless the situation and the circumstance, in God's economy, he sustains the ability as the El Shaddai to introduce what I call systems of advantage. There is nobody's life that is in advantage by default. Are we together now? Yes. The first of that system of advantage being salvation. That when you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, according to the authority of scripture, the Bible says that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. Then the Bible lets us know that you become a partaker of God's life. That is the first system of advantage that comes into your life John 10 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy the Bible says it says but I am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly are we still together but then there are other systems of advantage that are spiritual arsenals that God had made and put in place for believers so that no matter and regardless what happens in your life by the introduction of these systems of advantage you eventually emerge victorious it is it is on the strength of these systems of advantage that we show the all-surpassing dominion power of the Christ so that regardless my background regardless what it is that happened or did not happen in my life once i come to christ there is no such thing as too late because there are sufficient spiritual arsenals that can be introduced into the life of a believer to begin to correct even age-long anomalies are we together now an example of these systems of advantage is the mercy of god one of these systems of advantage is the favor of God. One of these systems of advantage is speed and acceleration. All these are provisions that were captured in the economy of God to the intent that when and if any man decides to walk with the Lord and begins to grow through knowledge, you can access these truths. And then the reality of the divine life Start speaking because you engage these things. There are people, for instance, who come from backgrounds where they are saddled with all kinds of yokes and curses, and by default, these individuals become victims of life, victims of situations and circumstances. And even if they get born again, there are still constraints that their lives constraints in their lives by reason 
of the advantage the devil had there has to be a way of correcting that anomaly are we together now there are people who by reason of activities of witchcraft did not have the privilege say to go to school early and to move forward early so already by default they are already retrogressed and delayed in life is there a way that god can help those people to catch up in destiny oh yes there is the name given to that mystery is called speed that god can take the 10 years that were wasted and transfer it into a man's future and make it happen in one day are we together now listen when we say we are victorious we are not just saying it because jesus died and resurrected just religiously we are saying it because we are aware of the spiritual arsenals that the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus has provided for the believer today it is on the strength of these truths that we make our boast in the lord are we together now yes so we know that we are victorious we know that in spite of what happened or did not happen a woman may be barren for five years ten years even twenty years if that woman gives birth to a child yet yeah, thank god for the child but time has gone if she is to give birth to four children one by one by one by one at what age will she be done giving birth so when god gives her quadruplets he did not just give a child he carried years and brought it in nine months are, are you seeing that now i'm saying this because tonight there is something that is about to happen to someone here in the name of jesus the son of the living god that the things that have 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 been um a, a disadvantage to your life we have come to introduce a system of advantage into your work that will begin to so change things that those who knew you will say is saul when has saul also become one of the prophets please sit down hallelujah are we together once upon a time moses went to meet his half brother Ramesses, who had now become the pharaoh of egypt to advocate the exodus of god's people and they came out of egypt and he began to pursue them they stood before the red sea there was no provision to move forward again egyptians behind the sea in front by what architectural mechanism where they're going to build a system of safety to cross over everybody says systems of advantage and in exodus chapter 14 when you read from verse 13 and 14 and 15 moses had a strange encounter with god he said fear not moses is speaking now a visionary leader he said stand still and see the salvation of the lord which he show you today for these egyptians whom ye have seen today you shall see them no more forever listen as at the time he was saying this he did not even know the dynamics of how it will happen all he knew was that the lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace then verse 15 the lord said to moses wherefore criest thou to me he says speak unto the children of israel that they go forward hold on how do i go forward when i know that a sea can swallow anything i hope you know that it was not just that the sea parted the gap the land had to rise to their level to be able to walk because even if the sea parted it would still be a depth that they would not cross listen carefully just help those under the anointing now and then moses received that instruction and when he stretched forth his rod the Egyptians saw a dimension of God they had not seen among any of the gods of Egypt. The God who with the breath of his nostrils, he parted the sea like doors, hither and thither, and lifted land to their level on dry ground. When they cross over, 
Pharaoh attempting to cross over was swallowed by the sea. Miriam was too grateful. She sang a song. She said, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. Even the horses and his riders have been thrown into the sea. One time, they became hungry. Very hungry. And God said, I want to show you the systems that are available in this kingdom. Manna, not seeds for you to sow. There are times God can give you seed and wisdom to sow. But there are times the urgency requires bread. You don't have the time to start sowing and waiting for harvest. God can send both seed and he can give bread. He can give seed to the sower. But he also can give bread to the eater. It is true that God can give you a job and you can start saving for 5-10 years. But there are times that God can give you the keys to a house in one day. It is the same God doing it. Please pay attention. Then they stand in front of Jericho. A fence so fortified, the Bible says five chariots could stand on it. Imagine a fence that five chariots could stand on it. Even if it collapses, it's still a fence again. And Joshua was led to introduce another system of advantage. The Bible says Jericho was shot. Nothing could come out of it. Nothing could enter it. And they went round singing praises every day once. And on the seventh day, they went round. And he said, when you hear the sound of that trumpet, that you lift up a shout. And the Bible tells us that the walls of Jericho, it did not just fall, it sank. The power of God. And one of these systems of advantage tonight that the Lord wants to introduce is called the mystery of restoration. Ah! The mystery of restoration. Please look up. Scattered through scripture, the Bible tells us that men can gain things, but also men can lose things. Is that true? We see that people lost things, even believers lost things in scripture. For instance, Saul, the son of Kish, they lost their donkey, the father's donkey, and they went looking for it. Jesus himself in giving his parable helping them understand the system of the kingdom spoke about the parable of the lost coin so we know that it is not unusual for things to be missing it is not unusual for us to lose things but then the bible gives us another interesting angle to it that men can lose things but men can lose time the loss of time according to scripture is truly what we call loss if you lose things you can get it back but when you lose time because destiny is measured in time write it down the unit of destiny is time that means whatever you give your time to you give part of your life to whatever takes your time has taken a part of your destiny are we together now? The unit of destiny is time. And so there are times you can lose things. Sadly, after the pandemic or during the pandemic, many people lost money, many people lost jobs, many people lost businesses. So we know that men can lose things. But it is more deadly when you lose time. When you meet a dying man and ask him what is your greatest desire. He will not say more houses. He will not say more land. The greatest request of a dying man is more time. Isaiah 38. The Bible lets us know that Hezekiah was sick unto death. And Isaiah came to him and said put your house in order. God has brought a word. You will not recover from this sickness. The Bible says Isaiah turned his face to the wall. And his prayer was a request of time. Time. From the human standpoint. 
is irredeemable when it passes it doesn't go back it only goes forward and that means whatever can eat up your time has taken a part of your destiny so when the bible says i will restore the years you need to understand the gravity of that miracle restore years how do you restore years when a man gets born again at 40 respectfully speaking and at 50 yes he's done well to get born again but in truth as far as destiny and impact and fulfillment of life is concerned time is gone you will need to introduce this system of advantage in your life is that true restoration is a very powerful mystery to restore means to take a person or to take a thing to its original position where it would have been if there were no constraint listen carefully there is a difference between restoration and progress let me have two people can i have two gentlemen two well-dressed gentlemen please come let me use you for an example just two and that's fine we have this one more person watch this now i like to teach illustratively so that you will understand now this is what i want you to do walk together all right walk slowly now these guys are at the same pace in life and destiny are, are we together now they are going to walk towards me but along as they walk i'm going to make one of them to be delayed and then eventually i'll ask him to start coming i want to show you the difference between progress and restoration are we together now walk gently gentlemen so born on the same day and now for whatever reason stop moving can you see this is where he would have been so he's behind now now keep moving this is progress not restoration because he will never still catch up now let me show you what restoration is when god picks him and brings him here do you understand that now so that when you look at his life you cannot find the gap that delay created again i prophesy to you again in the name of jesus christ everything that has represented delay in your life here at this conference may my god push you forward in the name of jesus christ thank you please sit down please sit down so it is true that we can lose things the concept of losses is a concept that we do not want to hear anything about not in business not in, nobody wants to lose losing is dangerous no one wants to lose a loved one no one wants to lose money no one wants to lose honor no one wants to lose respect no one wants to lose your valuable why do we protect our cars why do we protect our homes because we hate losses let's discuss the subject of losses for a while is god helping someone there are five reasons why people lose in life remember we are teaching on advancement but we have to deal with the subject of delay and retrogression there are five reasons from scripture why men lose number one very quickly the first reason why people lose in life is because of lack of discernment write it down please the lack of discernment lack of discernment can cause you to lose hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 we we'll walk through a few scriptures hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1 the bible says therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep remember jesus was giving us the parable of the sower is that true and he said the seed is the word of god the soil being the hearts of men and he said for all the soils seeds were sown but satan came immediately and he caused losses and for those that satan came they were the ones who did not pay attention to produce understanding from their hearing genesis chapter 28 and verse 16 very interesting rendition 
this just a background for that scripture very quickly this was jacob remember the bible tells us that jacob came to a place called loss and he laid a stone for to sleep in the night are we bible students and then the bible says while he slept he saw a ladder he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth and the heavens angels were ascending and descending but do you know none of them were coming to him they were moving close to him taking messages to those who were calling them and he was there and never partook of that angelic activity and when he woke up verse 16 please he made a very instructive statement he said surely the lord is in this place and i knew not i did not discern that i was just, not just lying down on a floor that there was an altar here my father had a covenant with god i came close to the place of covenant it would have blessed me it would have lifted me but lack of discernment did you know that one of the highest indices according to scripture that measures maturity is the ability to discern strong meats the bible says are for them who are of full age is that true who by reason of use have exercised their senses to discern discernment is powerful the faculty of perception this comes through prayer this comes through study of scripture this comes through exposing yourself to the atmosphere of the holy spirit in these end times you need discernment if you do not want to lose your bishopric to lose your destiny it takes discernment are we still together the first reason why people lose we're dealing with the mystery of restoration lack of discernment number two the second reason why people lose in this kingdom is carelessness 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 is the second reason why we lose revelation chapter 3 please and verse 11 revelations 3 and verse 11 it says behold i come quickly hold that fast which thou hast that no man take thy crown you can lose your crown hebrews chapter 2 and verse 3 hebrews 2 and verse 3 please give it to us hebrews 2 and verse 3 the bible says how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation negligence carelessness many people have lost precious things because of carelessness they have lost valuable destiny relationships they have lost opportunities for instance how many young people had the opportunity they heard that a job offer was there at a platter of gold their uncle said send your cv and they carelessly assumed that the job will always be there carelessness is dangerous we must obtain grace tonight to fight carelessness like you fight the devil you can lose things you can lose years because of carelessness number three are we still together the third reason for losses in this kingdom is called ignorance of the laws of life ignorance of the laws of life comma the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom ignorance of the laws of life the laws of destiny and the laws of the kingdom psalm 82 and verse 5 listen this world operates by laws there are laws of life there are laws of destiny there are laws of the kingdom your ignorance of those laws can cost you so many things including your life let me give you an instance someone can decide right now to end his life by going to stand in front of a moving train is that true he violated the laws of life someone can be part of a bad relationship that leads him into destroying a precious destiny that's violating the laws of destiny but there are people who can give themselves over through ignorance and the devil can take advantage of them and destroy and waste their lives ignorance listen this is a kingdom that operates by light it takes spiritual illumination high level illumination 
Psalms 82 and verse 5. The Bible says they know not, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, I have said, ye are God and all of you, not some, are children of the Most High. The tragedy is in the next verse. But ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. Ignorance is costly. We must contend for light. We must contend for spiritual illumination. Is that true? It was this passion for light to supply spiritual intelligence to the body that made Paul to make that statement he made in Ephesians chapter 3. Please give us Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 2 and 3 then we'll jump to 9 and 10. 2 and 3. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me for your sake now to you word how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote a four in few words now when you go to verse 9 he was granted grace what is the grace the grace is to make all men see to open the eyes of men take away ignorance and verse 10 is the reason to the intent that now to the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of god dominion is the resultant effect of the comprehension of the principles of the kingdom dominion is not an impartation there is no anointing in scripture for dominion dominion is the resultant effect of your comprehending the ways of god we have beautiful media people here doing an excellent job of coverage while i teach they are operating by knowledge not their size not their gender it is the level of illumination they have as far as this activity is concerned we must contend for mastery and fight ignorance like we fight the devil are we together number four is god helping us we are discussing losses because when you want to make advancement advancement happens in the absence of situations that retrogress or impede you to the degree to which that impedance is taken away that is the degree to which it can be said you are advancing number four the fourth reason for losses is abuse and misuse the fourth reason why people lose is abuse and misuse matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 jesus is teaching now and he's teaching about what we have come to know as the parable of the talent follow carefully for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country it says who called his own servants and delivered unto them goods so he gave them something and unto one he gave five talents to another two to another one the bible says to every man according to his ability not according to his love for them at the end of this parable you see he was correct for that allocation 17 the bible says let's go back to 16 25 verse 16 25 verse 16 help us media we're still discussing the parable then he that had received the five talents he went and traded with the same and he made them other five talents and likewise he that had received two he gained also two the tragedy now 18 but he that received one went and did what dig the earth and hid his lord's money you bury seeds not talents talents are not for the ground talents are for multiplication you sow seeds the earth is for seeds not for talents and yet this man took something that was supposed to be you were supposed to do business with it abuse and misuse is one of the reasons why people lose when the owner of the talents came back to demand accountability 
in his arrogance he said i know you are a hard man you like to reap where you do not sow and so i thought to do you a favor i buried it here is your one talent and he called him a wicked and unprofitable servant he took that one talent and he gave it to the one who had proven faithfulness in stewardship the bible says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful are we still together tonight abuse and misuse it was dr miles munro of blessed memory who said when the purpose of a thing is not known he said that the abuse of it is inevitable the word abuse is an abbreviation for abnormal use when a thing is not used within the boundary of its purpose is called abuse are we together so a quick recap before i mention the last point the reasons for losses in life number one lack of discernment number two carelessness number three ignorance of the loss of life the loss of destiny the loss of the kingdom number four abuse and misuse number five tests and trials the fifth reason according to scripture why men lose it can be it may be because of tests and trials job chapter one please from verse nine the bible clearly gives us a a biblical rendition of the life of this man called job the bible testifies that he was a man who feared god and eschewed evil please give us verse 9 follow carefully as i read then satan answered the lord and said does job fear god for nothing has thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on every side has thou not blessed the work of his hand my god so satan can give this kind of testimony about a man satan is testifying before god that i came close to a man and i found that man so fortified both him his house and his endeavor next verse now put forth your hand and touch all that he had and he will curse you to the face the lord said unto satan behold all that he had is in thy power only upon himself put not forth your hand so satan went forth from the presence of the lord sin two tragedy strikes on earth now and there was a day may that day never come to your life but for this man there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house that means they were responsible children the elder brother was already established and something happened there came a messenger unto job and said the oxen were plowing the asses feeding besides them be patient and the sabians fell upon them and took them away yea they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you imagine this kind of news next verse while he was yet speaking there came another and said the fire of god is fallen from heaven and had burned up the sheep the servants consumed them and i only am escaped to, to tell you while he was yet speaking my god there came another and said the chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon your camels they have carried them away yea and slain the servants with the edge of the sword and i only am escaped to tell you as though that was over he was yet speaking there came another and said this one is not just animals again now your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house and behold there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and i am escaped alone to tell you two more verses then job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped and worshipped after such a news next verse please we're finishing at 22 
and said naked came i out of my mother's womb and naked shall i return thither the lord gave and the lord had taken away blessed be the name of the lord 22 hallelujah and in all this job sinned not nor charged god foolishly listen to me there are times in your life and my life i know this is not a popular message but there are times that events can happen around your life to the end that the worship of things and your connection to things be broken god's obsession is not to take away things from us he desires that we prosper but there is a problem when those you see the thing with things is that they also want to be lords so when they come to your life they don't remain where you kept them they also begin their manifesto in your life to ascend to a point where they take god's throne there is a system for managing those things god enthrones himself in your life by withdrawing from your life everything that tries to be him so if it is your intelligence if it is your uncle your connection there are people who come to church and while they are saying understand faith they are laughing but they don't really care because there is an uncle who are giving them assurance whenever you are ready you come and just when you are ready the uncle relocates to canada let me tell you what happens to you when you come for service under that condition whether there's praise worship or not you will lie down on the ground that's the real day you will start learning faith because at that point now you have been forced the human spirit is stubborn it does not easily bow to the lordship of christ not in the presence of things not in the presence of many the bible says it this way apostle john was teaching us in his epistles he says love not the world neither the things that are in the world the word love there is the greek word eros is an affinity an ungodly affinity that can affect your relationship with god there is a jealousy dimension of god that will not share accommodation with every other thing he created it's an exclusive position so whilst he blesses you with prosperity increase fame anointing whatever it is he doesn't have a problem with you having those things but there is a side effect to men who have not been worked upon by god it does not mean you are bad it's a weakness in humans you must pass through a season in the spirit where god steps back and allow those things that have attempted to be savior and lord and el shaddai you see the futility of them outside of the influence of god the end is not to destroy you see when you are passing through this season with god it looks like he's nonchalant over the things you are losing he's concentrating on your training because when you do learn restoration is still possible so while you are saying god are you not seeing what is leaving me he's saying in my world not yet, there's no such thing as something living i am working on you there are people who stand and brag based on their certificates based on their uncles their aunties did your bible not say some will trust in horses it says some trust in chariots but we we who have been cultured to understand we trust in the name that anything minus the name of the lord is a disaster it's only a matter of time a man can vow and say come and meet me tomorrow and get a contract and between that night Till the next day and Ahitophel comes to him and gives him a counsel and by the next day he says I can't remember telling you such a thing listen believers it is true that there are times that tests and trials can cause us to lose things albeit temporarily James chapter 1 Apostle James was teaching us from verse 2 are we still learning james james chapter one apostle james is teaching us he said my brethren so he's talking to believers in christ he's not talking to the heathen my brethren count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations support your confidence with this revelation knowing this there is something you need to know that gives you confidence in the midst of plenty and in the midst of nothing knowing this 
Now, Lord, you seem so far away, a million miles on what it feels today. You may be going through a season like that, and though I haven't lost my faith, I must confess right now that it's hard for me to pray. It's true, but I don't know what to say. I don't know where to start But as you give the grace With all that's in my heart I will see And I will pray Even in my darkest star Through the sorrow and the pain I will see And I will pray Here's the part of the song that I love. I lift my hands to honor you because your word is true. I will see. Can I tell you this? Ask any great man you know, there is something in the school of the spirit called the cave of Adulam. That is where great men are made. There are certain times in this life, some prayers you cannot pray some things away. You can only pray for grace to pass through it. Run away from people without scars. They have jumped the school of the spirit. Paul said, let no man trouble me. I'm speaking to some of you because, hear me, your loss is not because of carelessness. Uh -uh. There is the making of a man of God. There is a making of an intercessor. There is a making of a kingdom financier. Not every loss is demonic. The training of champions is hard. God called you to be a kingdom financier. And gave you an instruction to carry all your money and bring to church. You brought the money and sold and told by the next day the heavens will open. And for one year... You are now living from hand to mouth. He does not hate you. He's teaching you faith. There will be a recompense. So that you can stand holding an account with one billion. And yet it's not in your heart. Jesus is still Lord. That is the morale of the training. Can I tell you this? I came here sensing in my heart. That within your region. There are people who have lost things. And even lost time. There are people as soon as you finish school You wanted to get a job like every other person God says stay back And everybody is moving forward And even you You don't know the name of what you are doing with God God what are you doing with me Can I tell you this You must understand that when God is silent His silence is a language Every time God is silent He's saying you are in the school of the spirit don't be embarrassed you will cry it's true you've often heard people i hope god is blessing you tonight there are fathers of faith here veterans of the gospel your fathers in the land you ask them they will tell you their journeys they will tell you they will there, there as a man of god there are times you will be going through things yourself you will counsel others and you will receive a word for them but for you a word does not come and yet God will demand obedience and compliance. You pray for someone and there is an open door. But there are bills waiting for you. And you are saying, God, I'm serving you faithfully. I'm teaching you what the silence of God is saying. You are in a school. While you are crying, heaven is clapping and saying, don't give up. Because the Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing. It says, for we will reap. Well-doing is a seed. Is God speaking to us? There are various reasons. Can I tell you this? <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Genesis chapter 40, don't turn there, just write it for reference. The Bible talks of a prison. Look up, please. Joseph and the wine presser and the baker met in one place. The name of that place is the prison. The prison is where both good and bad people meet. Don't judge everybody in the prison. They are there for various reasons. There are some who are there because they defaulted. 
but there are some who are there because they are being made to become saviors the prison is where both good and bad meet the cross is where both jesus and the thieves meet be careful when you judge people while they are going through seasons you do not know the reason why they are going through it are we together in that same prison there was joseph the righteous there was the wine presser the butler the defaulters they were all there the way to the throne is the cross the way to sit over egypt is to pass through the prison let me speak to you many of you admire greatness you admire great people i want to tell you there is a mystery that not many of them will tell you sincerely look beyond the crowns and the glamour there are scars that are testaments of endurance they lost to gain if you want to gain in this kingdom you must be prepared to lose losing is how we gain are we together because you will not appreciate restoration until you understand the idea of losses there are people right now who have lost things you lost a job because of your integrity you made up your mind you will not compromise you will not bribe and you lost not every loss is proof that god has left you there are losses that are scars of honor symbols of endurance is god still with us tonight mm. let me give us three keys for restoration and then we'll pray someone's breakthrough is coming now please pay attention keys give us access as big as a door is it's a small key that opens it how many of you have stood before a giant door simply because a key that could enter your pocket was missing you stood before that door helpless as adult and matured as you are a small key was missing and it kept you grounded keys are powerful they can open great doors even ancient doors number one what is the first key for restoration please pay attention number one the first key that leads to restoration according to scripture is called self-examination the power of evaluation the power of self-examination you want restoration in your life your family your business self-examination second corinthians 13 and verse 5 help us media second corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 read with me please if you're a christian and you can see it projected ready one to read examine yourself it says uh-huh whether ye be in the faith the instruction is examine yourselves to examine yourself means to find a place and sit down and engage in deep contemplation there are many people who pray but they do not think thinking is a miracle the bible says god is able to do more than what we ask or think you've heard me say it in my teachings that both your prayer and your thinking are warriors there is a prayer warrior there is a thinking warrior god answers all the requests they bring to him you can pray well but if you do not think well you may never come out of certain tragedies the psalmist would write a song and he would write under sila pause and think deeply is that true the bible encourages believers to think to sustain times of deep contemplation for instance in philippians chapter 4 and verse 8 it says finally brethren whatsoever things are true honest just pure lovely are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise it says think on these things self-examination luke chapter 15 popular story we read three verses from verse 17 luke 15 from verse 14 this was the story of the prodigal son please keep the scripture there just as a background let's go to verse 17 okay well keep it from verse 14 
Remember the young man who had access to his father's wealth, but he wanted ownership. Is that true? And the father gave him. He did not think well. If he thought well, he would know that access is better than ownership. Because access, you have, you have the abundance to you minus the responsibility of maintenance. But ownership, you have both access and the responsibility of maintenance. In this kingdom, we don't own anything. Owners are rebels. We are stewards. My car, my house, my children. Then you maintain it. In this kingdom, we have access. From Genesis, you may freely eat, but it's not your own. But the, the carnal man wants it in his name. Ownership. The young boy had access. But he wanted ownership. Father, I'm of age. Let it be in my name. Lack started when access switched to ownership. And the young man went as a result of his careless thinking. His life deteriorated. He lost everything. Are we still together? To a point where someone who was in a place of royalty was now feeding with the swine. 14, please. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want we are reading to 20 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into the fields to feed swine what a what a decline and he would not fain and he would not fain have filled his belly with the hosts that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself the bible did not say the holy ghost spoke to him the Bible did not say a counselor advised him. It is within the power of the human spirit to sit down and say, why is my life like this? Listen, let me tell you, there, there is, for many of you here, this is already a word for you. Don't allow yourself to just keep growing old and things are just happening. You need to sustain the power of contemplation. As a father, why am I always in lack? Why am I always fighting? The seed for an answer is a question. You do not deserve an answer until you have a question. Is that true? For someone here, you need to sit down and think, why am I failing in this business? Lord, you gave me a ministry. Influence zero, doctrine zero, salvation zero. Something is wrong. The Bible says, be still and you will know. There is a level of knowledge that comes when you are still. Our generation sadly is a busy generation. Thank God for technology, but if not managed, it can be the demon that distracts you out of advancement. Is that true? All kinds of things clamoring for your attention. No. Champions and great people, those who make advancement in life are people who understand the power of deep contemplation they lock themselves you are a visionary leader millions are depending on the ideas and the decisions that come out of that contemplation you cannot be careless you cannot be rash obtain grace in jesus name to sit down quietly some of you after this conference you may just need to go excuse everybody out of your house or your room or your office and just sit down quietly no television no radio no internet Holy Ghost, I'm here. There has to be a way out of this. Speak to me. Go and ask inventors, as champions, as visionary leaders. Ideas are birthed in the place of contemplation where they sit quietly. There has to be a way to this business. There has to be a way to raise this capital. There has to be a way to ministry. Spirit of the living God, I open up my faculties to your influence. And whilst you are there, suddenly from heaven, something comes and graduates you to victory for the next 10 years. Are we blessed? The power of self-examination, the power of contemplation. This is the first key to restoration. Number two. The second key that leads to restoration is brokenness. Psalm 51 verse 17, brokenness. Because there are times you notice out of the five reasons I gave you, five reasons for losses, four of them are reasons 
that authorize Satan to come and destroy your life. So when you want restoration, Psalm 51, please, and verse 17, there are times you need to be broken. Brokenness suggests taking responsibility. Brokenness suggests saying, look, the way things have gone around my life, there may be need for repentance. There may be need for openness of heart. Lord, I repent. You spoke to me in a dream. My pastor gave a message. I ignored him. I ignored the instructions of the authorities over me. There must be need for brokenness. The young man, when he came to himself, here's what he said. Let me show you what brokenness is. How many hired servants has my father? And I am here feeding with the swine. Here is brokenness. I will arise. And I will go to my father. I cannot advance into prosperity. But I can advance to the man who can help me. There are two levels of advancement. Advancement to God. Then from God. Advancement to destiny. You cannot advance to destiny. When you have not advanced to God. When you find yourself in defeat. Don't advance to money. Don't advance to fame. Don't advance to a blind restoration. There is only one person who deserves your advancement. I cannot go back to my wealth. I cannot go back to my reputation. But I can go back to my father. God is speaking to someone here. You were once on fire. You once loved God. Now it looks like you have lost everything. You were once a visionary businessman until you joined some so-called club or association that just derailed your values. It may not be easy to get that business back overnight, but there is a father who is waiting for you. Notice the Bible never said the prodigal son met the father at home. The father already started moving too. He will not meet you at your mess, but you will not meet him at home too. You will meet him somewhere at the point of your obedience i will arise he says and i will go to my father when i see my father i will not just shake him and say hi dad mm -mm. i will say father i have sinned against you and against heaven i am not worthy to be called your son he says but take me as one of your servants when the father saw that there was brokenness already he didn't even talk to him about the issue again he held him and embraced him and restored the signet ring a symbol of royalty you are now back to my fold listen to me every time you lose in life businessmen hear this when your business crashes and everything goes down don't say i'm looking for money to go back uh -uh. there is only one person you go back to father abba the source the sustainer until you sort it out with god you cannot go back anywhere you used to be a man of god on fire now you backslidden prayer life zero word life zero you're not even sure you are saved you don't go back to ministry you go back to father it is from father he reallocates you to your inheritance is somebody learning now we're dealing with restoration genuine biblical pathway that leads to restoration it cannot be in the absence of brokenness from self-examination to brokenness lord i'm sorry i was not a faithful tither i was not a giver i did not support your house you gave me two billion naira i misused it jumped around with psycho fans who promised to be there now everything has gone bad don't say the ideas are still in my head it's just to get a loan i assure you you will recycle that pain again life is a patient teacher it can repeat the lessons for as long as it will take for you to learn are we together what do you gain in the place of brokenness a contrite heart what do you gain in the place of brokenness you reprioritize god above everything i love you forever i love you forever i love you forever lord Forever, I love you. Forever, I love you. Forever. Listen, 
let me show you the position of brokenness this is it yes i know you are a ceo but life brings you to a point where you are no longer ashamed when your knees can touch the ground then your head can wear the crown again when your knees can touch the ground in brokenness samson was one person who lost his estate in destiny let me show you how that restoration happened his eyes his symbol of light had been taken away and while they put him between two pillars to mock his god he prayed one prayer i may not have the opportunity to live again but oh god even in death give me the honor and the privilege of valiance let me do much for you and they did not realize that while they were laughing at him his hair was coming back can i tell you this rejoice not over me my enemies no matter what happened to your yesterday i bring you a word of hope jesus died but he only died for three days let me encourage someone here yes your prayer life has gone down yes i know things may have gone down it may have been your fault your carelessness wrong associations mistakes but let me bring you a word of hope at the scent of water at the scent of water while you are laughing at jesus who died there is an angel leaving heaven to come and open the grave while you are laughing at the dead jesus he did not die forever he only died for three days he only died for three days and while they were laughing at the one who died an angel came the hymn writer says up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph all his foes he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever with his saints to reign if christ arose you can arise did you hear what i said businessman hear me man of god hear me those following from whatever nation watching hear me there is hope in this kingdom one of the systems of advantage is that no matter what goes wrong once there is brokenness you have planted the seed for continuity of your destiny can i give you an advice great leaders no matter how bad people are if you find genuine brokenness i show you people who are still usable but no matter how good people are if you do not find brokenness that is a disaster only waiting for time of all that saul was he was broken when he fell before that light who art thou lord he said i am jesus whom thou persecutest you cannot kick against the bricks and his heart was open when peter denied jesus he was broken even the judas you talk about judas was so broken he did not spend the money brokenness is powerful it vetoes your fasting it vetoes your prayer you can fast you can pray you can walk in church if there is no brokenness you cannot go far with god i think we should turn this into a prayer in one minute whilst you are seated cry to the god of heaven lord grant me a broken spirit the pride and the arrogance that is rebellious towards god give me the malleability to repent the ability to not be ashamed that when there is a default in my life and my destiny and my losses come as a report card letting me know that i need to retrace my steps pain is a letter from your future to your present warning you that you need to make adjustments in your life is someone praying please pray be like that prodigal son tonight for some of you hallelujah now listen to me listen to me i still have two more points and then we're going to pray but at this juncture my spirit is fired up and i want to make an altar call you are here and you've heard me speak 
and once you heard me speak the holy ghost began to tell you it's time to win this war of destiny tonight there is nothing to be ashamed of running to jesus is like running to receive an award not running to a funeral hear me there are people up the balcony across the aisles and maybe even outside online following you know that the first restoration you need is jesus christ nobody will force you but i believe with all my heart there are people who need to make it right or there are others who say apostle i remember giving my heart to the lord but the way my life is now things have gone haywire wherever you are as i count one to five as our father will always do i like you to leave your seat wherever you are and please run and come and stand here unashamedly you are standing before jesus one are you celebrating them champions cathedral come and stand before jesus the god of your salvation please stand for space stand celebrate them as they come it's time to win that war is this how you celebrate salvation here okay those outside you can create a space for them outside because of that those outside hear me please those who are coming from outside let's have some ushers or counselors just create a space for them where they can stand keep coming come to jesus come to jesus come to jesus are you coming to jesus i have to pray for you before we continue i love i love i love your presence I love I love your presence I love I love I love you Jesus I love I love I love your presence I love your presence. Listen. Look at me. My brothers and my sisters, some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from him. So that you have come to Jesus who is the Lord of your salvation. I like you to know that you are not a rebel. Young and old. For some of you, you've been having dreams. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to you. For some of you, he carried you and brought you here. Do you know why? More than just making heaven, there are destinies that are connected to your obedience. He brought you here to make you. If Billy Graham never got born again in that crusade ground, there are millions today who would not make it because of him. If Reinhard Bonke never made it to Jesus. Can I tell you this? Many of you are here like the prodigal son tonight. It is within your power to come to yourself and make up your mind i'm tired of this kind of thing i cannot waste the sacrifice of jesus on the cross can i tell you this every one of us including myself had to stand before the lord of our salvation to make this decision this is not a funeral you are standing before jesus the only thing i want you to do is to mean seriously what you are saying don't come and stand here just because of emotions let it be from the depth of your heart the bible says whosoever will come to him he will in no wise cast away listen to me my brothers and my sisters you are here because there is a beautiful destiny yes because you leave jesus i leave i have no fear of what tomorrow brings because you leave jesus i leave today i leave to pray take 
breathe my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. Take my body, my soul, my spirit. Breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Your father is here. Like the prodigal son. When he came to his father, the father embraced him. I am still Abba. Your source, your sustainer. Please lift your right hand high to the heavens. Above your head. And I'd like you to say this after me passionately. Jesus is here. For some of you in your tears and your prayer is the salvation of millions. For some of you in your tears and your prayer is the finances that will fund the gospel in these end times. There are apostles here and prophets and evangelists and pastors and businessmen and politicians, custodians of the destinies of many. Take seriously the decision you are making. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it again passionately. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. Like the prodigal child, I have come to you just as I am unable to help myself but I believe in your love I believe you died for me I believe you shed your blood for me I believe you resurrected for me tonight I make Jesus my Savior my Lord and my King I receive eternal life into my spirit i also receive the abundance of grace even the gift of righteousness and i declare that from today and forever i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father I present to you the ones Jesus died for. Jesus, when you hung upon that cross, these ones together with all of us were worth your death, your blood. Like trophies we bring to you, Abba, these ones who have come back home. According to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken over your life. I commend you therefore to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that is able to make you and mature you and to make you a useful battle axe in the hands of the Lord every guilt every shame every past leaves you now and leaves you forever in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen now very quickly before I they are returning back to their seats okay now this is what i want you to do all of you the teaching is still on so even whilst you are there please lend your attention but there is a, a counselor waving the placard just turn to the back and you will see him what i want all of you to do is just follow him together in concert as we clap for them there will be a group of people very briefly very briefly they will attend to you and you'll be back to your seat let's celebrate them Champions Cathedral, is this the best you can do? No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down. Coming out to me. Sing it one more time. There's no shadow you will lie up, mountain you will climb up, 
coming out to me. No one you won't keep down. Hallelujah. Can we take the third key? Just help those who are crying. Can we take the third key? Whilst you are taking them, counselors, just help them. Let's make it snappy so that they can be back because we are soon to pray now. The third key is knowledge. The third key that controls restoration. Are we still together? Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So number one, the power of self-examination, self-evaluation. Number two, the power of brokenness. The third key that controls restoration in this kingdom is knowledge. Proverbs chapter 11, please, and verse 9. Help us, media. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 9. The Bible says, An hypocrite with his mouth destroyeth his neighbor. The beepard says, But through knowledge shall the just be delivered through knowledge shall the just be delivered this is a kingdom that operates like i stated earlier operates by light is it possible is it possible to have excuse me is it possible to give the new converts the forms and then they can fill it on their seat and then when I'm done praying, I can still request that all of them get back. Will that be fine? Will that be fine, sir? Or, well, anyway, just I just thought so that it doesn't bring any distraction. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. Knowledge. Everyone say, through knowledge shall the just be delivered. One more time. Through knowledge shall the just be delivered. There is a relationship between knowledge and victory. There is a relationship between knowledge and deliverance. There is a relationship between knowledge and restoration. The same way ignorance leads to losses, knowledge can lead to restoration. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. A scripture I love to quote so much. Here's what it says. Arise, shine. Why? For your light is come not that your light is available it's always been there but when it comes to you it sustains the power to make you arise and to shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you i wish we can have the amplified rendition the amplified says let me quote it for time it says arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new life arise from the prostration the depression that circumstances have kept you rise to a new life oh beautiful we have it here it says be radiant with the glory of the lord why for your light has come everyone say my light has come, my light has come. prophesy it over your destiny my light has come prophesy it over your family my light has come light is powerful is it not light that turns night into day what did your Bible say about the night? That weeping is related to the night time. It endures for the night. It says, but joy, it ties light to joy. For as long as there is night in your life, weeping continues. But the moment illumination, light comes to you, then you arise in joy. You need to pant after knowledge. Knowledge of the ways of God knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom you must access wisdom by light scripture says talking of wisdom by me kings reign and princes decree justice it says it says with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness job 29 the exploits of job job was recounting the basis for his victory what was responsible for him being the greatest man in the east please give us job 29 the first four verses are we still together tonight moreover job continued his parable and said oh that i were in the months past he says as in the days when god preserved me when his candle everybody say light when his light shined upon my head 
and when by his light i walk through darkness there are two kinds of light you need to advance the one that shines on your head and the one that shines on your path the one that shines on your head is for knowledge the one that shines on your path is for direction job said this light was on my head and was on my path for he says as i was in the days of my youth when the secrets of the lord were upon my tabernacle in fact let's extend a bit go ahead and read when the almighty was yet with me and my children were about me when i wash my steps look at the fringe benefits of access to light i wash my steps with butter the rock poured out oil rivers of oil Uh uh-huh he says i went out to the gate through the city when i prepared my seat in the street what happened the young men by reason of this light they hid themselves and the aged ones stood up the princes refrained talking and laid their hands on their mouth ten the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth when the ear heard me it blessed me and when the eye saw me it gave witness to me just stop there the exploits of light you want advancement and even restoration it is at, it's at the mercy of the lights that you have this beautiful auditorium is well lit both your led screens the tvs and then the auditorium why because there's sufficient light if you put a candle here it's not light enough to turn the night into day you need high level spiritual illumination are we together the last key that controls restoration is the prophetic hmm Isaiah 42 and verse 22 the prophetic was given by God as an instrument of restoration Isaiah 42 please pay attention we're about to pray we're about to pray Isaiah 42 and verse 22 media help us let's read together can we read ready one to read but this is a people robbed and spoiled Uh uh-huh they are all of them snared in holes they are hid in prison houses they are taken for a prey and none say it delivered for a spoil and none say it restore restoration must be spoken to happen it says they are taken for a prey and there is no prophetic voice that can speak and say restore restoration second kings chapter 6 and verse 1 a classic expression of restoration hallelujah someone's life is about to change and the sons of the prophet said to elisha watch this now behold now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight or small for us let us go so this was an intention to go forward but something happened are we together let us go we pray thee unto jordan the place of breakthrough and take thence every man a beam and let us make us a place there where we may dwell and he said go ye when he gave that instruction one said be content i pray thee to go with thy servants and he answered i will go so he went with them and when they came to jordan they cut down wood the bible says but a tragedy happened listen carefully now but as one was felling a beam the axe head fell into the water and he cried and said alas master i am in trouble i've lost something now my sincere intention to go forward has brought me trouble and that axe was borrowed watch the prophetic the man of god answered and said calm down you are safe the prophetic is still within your reach where fell it ha, the lord is speaking to someone where fell the relationship where fell the favor where fell the open door and he showed him the place please keep the scripture and he cut down a stick and cast it in 
and the iron did swim and he said take it up to thee and he put down his hand and took it i will restore through the instrument of the prophetic an axe head heavier than water but under a certain condition i i i prophesy to someone in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god you now see what happens when our father baba deboye would stand and say in the name of jesus casually speaking everything you have lost let it be restored and people say amen and people return with testimonies and say my child who has been missing for 10 years let me tell you this i know that the prophetic may have been abused here and there but when the prophetic is administered within the balance of scripture it is powerful no man can rise beyond a certain threshold until the prophetic lifts you I tell you this I had the honor and the privilege of meeting our father again not too long and when he was praying and speaking over my life I knew it was coming from the depth of his heart he sent everybody out of the room and began to speak from the depth of his heart i knew he was not just advising he was programming realities can i tell you this as powerful as jesus is he walked under a closed heaven for 30 years until a prophet opened his heavens your jesus was under a closed heaven for 30 years until he met a prophet called john the baptist even if you are a midwife when you are pregnant and you are about to give birth another midwife will have to help you you hear me this is where the arrogance of our generation has pegged men you can respect yourself but you cannot honor yourself honor is conferred by another fire is about to fall in this place listen to me many of you have lost please take it hard for me listen carefully there is a prophetic word that i want to bring and then we'll pray i will not take too long we'll be done shortly please be sensitive now i just sense angelic activities in this place nehemiah chapter 5 and verse 11 Nehemiah 5 Champions Cathedral The city of Wari South of the Niger Hear the word of the Lord He said restore I pray you to them even when even when are you reading with me not tomorrow restore even this day their lands their fine yards their olive yards their houses a hundred part of the money and of the corn and of the wine and of the oil that he exact of them listen please look up Every time many of you are businessmen many of you read economies there is always whenever there is a taking it leaves someone and goes to the hand of another is that true who did your breakthrough when it left you where did it go because the bible says when you catch a thief he doesn't only restore he restores tenfold ezekiel 37 i was taken was still buttressing on this prophecy this is the prophetic word the lord gave me tonight nehemiah but hear me 
the hand of the Lord was upon me. We are reading Ezekiel 37. He carried me out in the spirit and set me down. And he showed me a valley full of bones. Bones means they were once an army. But something happened. He caused me to pass by them. They were very many. And they were very dry. That means they had been there a long time. Verse 3. He said unto me, son of man. Champions Cathedral. Can this business leave? Can this family leave? Can this anointing be restored? The prophet was honest. He said, Lord, with this situation I'm seeing, only thou knowest. And then he spoke to him. And he said to me, prophesy. He said to me, prophesy. He said to me, prophesy. Verse 5. Cause breath to enter you so that you will live. Verse 6. Beautiful. And I will lay sinews and I will do all of these things. Go to verse 7. That's what I'm looking for. He said, prophesy. And this verse says, so I. He said, deliver. So I. I'm here today because God sent me. If he says, prophesy, then we must prophesy. If he says, restoration, then we must decree it. Are you ready to pray? Father, I step into everything I have lost. Everything that has left me, left my family. Lift your voice and pray. Spiritually, financially, in ministry, in business, in career. Are you praying? Are you praying? Inside, outside. RCCG Champions Cathedral The City of Worry Lift your voice and declare Restore Restore the grace Restore the favor Restore the lifting Someone is praying. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My God. My God. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. But now, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. My glory, you lift my Glory, the lifter of my 
I like you. Please listen. Listen. There are few. We have a few minutes. I don't intend to delay us, especially because of our fathers. But the hand of God is upon me now. Praise the name of the Lord. Hear me. There are people here, and I'm seen by the Spirit. There are people here. There are yokes that have tied and kept individuals. Listen to me. And families. The Bible declares that now the Lord is that Spirit. And that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There are individuals here. The only thing growing in your life is your age. Nothing else is growing. I want to pray for you right now. Listen. As I pray for you, the power of God is going to come upon you. We may not be able to do that for everybody, but I want you to bring them out here. Let's just have a few ushers. Whether you are an usher or not, just join them. There's a reason I want to pray for them. We can, because this night, except God is not God, that whatever has held you down, in the name of Jesus, it must give way. Are we together? I stretch my hands right now. At the count of three, I declare that anyone here under the sound of my voice who has been tied down by witchcraft, tied down by all kinds of yokes, I join my faith with the fathers of faith and in the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name, Jesus. Don't come out at random. Don't come out at random. The power of God will bring you out. In the name of Jesus, just bring those under the anointing. One, two, you shout Jesus. Three, be delivered right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I decree and declare, bring those under the anointing. Jesus, the name that is above all names. Under the anointing, Skeparukata, let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go, release their destinies, release their destinies by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every plot that is not of God, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. Let there be deliverance now, let there be emancipation now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm praying for you. There are families. Zechariah chapter 1 from verse 18. He says, Son of man, what seest thou? And he said, I saw four horns. 19. He said, These are the horns that have scattered Judah. Your praise scattered Israel. Your covenant scattered Jerusalem. Your peace. There are horns that fight families. I'm praying again that every power sitting on anyone's destiny, you're going to shout that name again. In the name of Jesus, be delivered now. 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 Release families. Release destinies. Release families. Release destinies. Release families. Release destinies. We cost you by the God of heaven. We cost you by the God of Joshua that rides upon the wings of the wind. Hear me. Please listen. If there is any family here that has been tied down in one position, as I declare upon you, I'd like you to begin to receive and say, I'm moving forward. I'm making progress. I declare right now, every family that has been tied down, in the name of Jesus, go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. Go forward. No delay. Go forward. Restoration. In the name of Jesus. Let it rise. Darkness trembles in your holy light. Hope is 
is rising in this place tonight. Hear me. Listen. All of you who are in front here. Listen. Hold on. Everyone in front here I declare. That everything that has tied you. By the God of heaven. I command it to leave you now. Leave your family now. If you are in business here, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Alas, master, it was borrowed. In the name that is above all names. Everything that has tied you down. To bring reproach to the name of the Lord upon your life. I stand here upon this exalted altar. And I declare to you. Come out of every death now. Come out of every loss now. Come out of every death now. Come out of every loss now. I speak to you. Advance. 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 Go forward. Advance. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now listen to me please. Just two, three minutes and I'm done. The Bible speaks about a man in the book of Esther called Mordecai. Mordecai once saved the life. There are two people who did well. But were not rewarded in scripture. Number one was Joseph. He helped the wine presser to interpret his dream. And he said when you are restored, please tell the king I'm innocent. The man added two years to Joseph's pain. A man's memory, a man's forgetfulness can multiply your times of pain. Until God as an act of his mercy brought a dream to Pharaoh. And the wine presser said, I remember my wrong. The second person was Mordecai. He saved the life of Ahasuerus. The king over 127 priests provinces and Mordecai was not rewarded but when his time came the Bible says that night could not the king sleep I'm saying this because God is about to open the book of remembrance hear me there are some of you who have been part of the success story of many people you have contributed to the rising of many you have helped to take shame out of many but you have been forgotten in the name of Jesus, I bow my knees to the God of my covenant. Don't kneel down. I'm the one kneeling down. I pray for you. Between now and the next three months, if God be God, be remembered in the name of Jesus. Be remembered in the name of Jesus. Be remembered in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. That night, could not a hazard of sleep and he said bring me the chronicles when they brought him the chronicles he saw where Mordecai saved his life and yet was not rewarded and he said who is in the chamber her man was there and he said what shall be done to the man who does this her man thought he was the one and so out of the abundance of his selfishness he gave a recommendation he said do that immediately can I speak to you there are some of you who are at this conference it looks like you are nobody's ignored but i stand by the grace of god and i declare may what happened to mordecai happen to you yeah. hear me the bible says let god arise and let his enemies be scattered when haman coordinated the honor of Mordecai he returned back broken to his wife and he said wife look at what happened to me and he said uh uh Mordecai is a Jew Esther is a Jew you are in trouble he said this one has come to get you because there is a covenant that protects them can I speak to you anybody that has mocked your God and fought your covenant may what happened to her man happen to them
in the name of jesus christ i want you to go back home today with this consciousness that the lord has restored to me both things and years you are barren here trusting god for the fruit of the womb i want you to not just expect one child expect twins expect triplets in the name of jesus christ and may i lend my voice with the pastor and the leaders to encourage you please do not miss tomorrow morning session for anything it's a conference it takes a sacrifice but every session is worth your while and worth your coming open up your heart and ensure that you are around and invite as many if there is no space if you have to climb the roof climb and sit there in the days of jesus christ everybody who came had something to go back with for tonight may the lord bless you may the lord honor you in the name of jesus you will not need to tell people you came to church the testimonies that begin to happen will tell people that you met god in the name of jesus christ god bless you and see you tomorrow Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.